Okay, today is Saturday, October 22nd, and I'm going to be looking at OSPF. And I see a l many implementations of OSPF, primarily um, in organizations that have the, the staff and the knowledge, the staff with the knowledge to be able to achieve within OSPF the exact requirements that they have. And it is a, an extremely robust um, routing protocol and the, the capacity of OSPF is um, magical. And, and part of the magic with OSPF is that it is a completely open standard. And if, you know, if there's anything that someone wants to learn and about OSPF, I mean, let me do, just grab a tab here and drag over. So if you're curious about um, RFC, I think it's 28, is it 2865? I can't remember. Well, I'll just do this. Um, RFC, OS, OSPF. And 2328, okay. There we go. It's version 2. And RFC, OSPF. I want to bring up another one here. And while I'm doing that, let me just make a little statement here. This is something I was advised that I need to do, and it's going to be posted on at the beginning of the um, the YouTube page. Any of the information that I'm presenting here is as is. I'm providing no warranty as to whether the items expressed, implied, or statutory included, but not limited to any warranties of merchantability or fitness to a particular purpose or any warranty that can that the contents of this item will be error free. This is my um, sandbox for studying and it's, and it's there for that purpose specifically. Um, so anything that's seen here is for my use um, and you're welcome to, to view the contents and look at the contents and use them in a way that might be beneficial to you. But I provide no warranty of fact that everything I've done in these labs is 100% correct because I'm oftentimes just kind of flying by the seat of my pants as I work through these. So it's very possible that I'll make incorrect and inaccurate statements. Um, and it's a um, good engineer always goes back and checks to make absolutely sure that what's been said by one engineer is indeed fact. It's not that we don't believe our colleagues. It's that I, for me, I learn best when I learn it on my own. And I can't say that everyone learns that way. But for me, if I hear someone say something, if I hear them say that um, there's this RFC out there for OSPF, um, and if you want to really dig into it and understand how OSPF works, then I could take their word for it, but it's probably to my benefit, and I've just proven this to myself, it's absolutely to my benefit to go, to go dig in and um, explore it on my own. So, you know, a lot about OSPF is, um, no, everything about OSPF is open. So in, and in that, we can just kind of get started. I'm just going to hit a couple of the real high points. Um, OSPF is classified as an interior gateway routing protocol, an IGP. Uh, this means that it distributes the routing information between routers belonging to a single autonomous system. Um, the OSPF protocol is based on the SPF or link state technology, um, which is a departure from Bellman Ford, which, which we saw back in RIPNG and RIP. Um, some of the, one of the key factors about OSPF is that each router in the database in, in that autonomous system has an exact copy of the, um, the routing um, routes. The database is identical on all routers, and it's on the it's as the process 
of each router then taking that database and determining its best paths to the destinations so we're going to look at a lot of detail and I don't think I'm not going to wade through this because this is good reading on your own and with that I'm going to go back over here so in this lab what we're going to have is a routers one two and three I'll press let me make this a little larger and I've already configured the routers with the, the interfaces on the routers and loopback interfaces um, and with that it's uh, we're gonna configure multi area OSPF uh, gonna verify that the OSPF multi area is is functioning and operating correctly we're going to create an OSPF virtual link and we're going to do some summarization down here with this area 100 on those uh, those loopback interfaces and we're going to generate a default route in OSPF and also going to use um, Wireshark uh, and I think I'll just go ahead and start it right now I'm going to use Wireshark because we want to see the um, OSPF messages and and how those messages flow so if we're going to capture those at the beginning so I'll just say we'll do it between R1 and R2 with R1 and let that go ahead and come up and put that in the background so once once we have a couple of some capture time I can actually stop this because then there's a there's a repeat of, of the material um, so you see right now the only thing that's being passed back and forth is just the uh, the um, slot slarp slarp which is um, this is just a serial interface to protocol to make sure that the the link is still up and it's just sending keep alive so we're gonna put that just down here drag that off to the side and go into router one and just take a look at the interfaces show IP interface brief so there's uh, the serial interface is configured on router one we have a 10.1.12.1 network there on the serial one slash zero the serial one slash three I've got it configured um, but it's not the interface is configured but I don't have the connected over to router three at this point uh, what will be will be using that in probably the next lab so loop back interfaces that are configured and, and notice everything all the interfaces are in the up and up state router two show IP interface brief again all the interfaces are in the up and up state serial one slash zero is connecting down to R1 serial one slash one is connecting to R3 uh, we have a loop back uh, two on router two and, and look at the same interfaces on router the, the interfaces on router three the serial one slash one interface is in the up and up state uh, again that serial one slash three is the interface is configured but notice that it is administratively down and protocol down because I haven't actually um, done the wiring the connectivity from router one to router three but it's just there for now it will be used later um, loopback three interface up and up and loopbacks 100 through 103 in the up and up state um, and I think with that it is pretty straightforward I've also so I've already let me do show run interface loopback one Okay, show run. Oh, wrong router. I'm thinking I'm let me move over to router one. Show run interface loop back one. Okay. And the reason I'm showing you this is by default we're gonna see something interesting happen with these loop back interfaces, how they are reported in the routing table in terms of the um, subnet mask and there's some activity configuration activity that we can 
implement to actually change it to have the those loopbacks uh, reflect the network the way we actually want it to be reflected. So let's see, I think on router one, I need to go in here real quick and do a description interface loopback one, description engineering department. And I need to go over to router two show run interface loop back to yeah I need to go in here also conf t so I need to, I haven't completed the, the configuration I thought I was done but not quite so a little little homework here that I need to finish up and just take a moment interface loop back to need to make this description marketing Okay, so now I've got those. Yeah, now I have those loopback interfaces with the appropriate description so that they an indication of who they are and what they're doing. And now we can move back to router one and we'll go ahead and get started with configuring the um, OSPF. It's and so we're gonna go here, go into global configuration mode. And kick off. This is um, OSPF for IPv4. So we get started. Router. Our options there. Here's the one we want for this for IPv4. Um, OSPF v3 is for IPv3. We'll be getting to that one um, in a little later. And we say OSPF and a process ID. And we're going to give this process ID one. Um, and the networks so again network um, for the network for the segment between routers 1 and router 2 so we'll say 10.1.12.0 and the wildcard mask for that 22, 24 bit is 0.0.0.255 .0 and then we indicate area there's the area and we're going to put this in area zero. First area has to be zero. And we have another uh, network that we want participating in OSPF, and that's the loopback, the interface that's associated with loopback one. So we're going to say network 10.1.1.0. Wildcard mask for that 24 bit is 0 .0 0.0.0.255, area zero. Now, if we go back over here. If we take a look already, you see as soon as the hello packets are already going out from OSPF and the, the first hello packets um, start at once and the first network that once this network here, this network 10.1.12.0 with that wildcard of 00 0.225 to area 0. Let me go ahead and stop that. Once that network was confined, the, the first hello message um, started going out. And so we can look really, really quickly at this. Just want to look at the, we see the source is from 10.1.12.1, which we know is router 1. It's going to a multicast of 224.0.0.5. Um, we've got the OSPF header here that it is a version 2 um, OSPF message type hello um, the OSPF router ID now notice here that the router ID that's been picked up already at this point is 172.30.30.1 now that is loopback 30 okay um, now what's interesting is that's not the actual router ID that uh, we want to have so we're going to actually define um, the router ID uh, on its own by itself 
Now, did I define that, or is that a holdover from my previous? Okay, we'll just keep rolling. So there's the area ID, which is set up in a 32-bit uh, format, 0, .0, 0.0.00. Hello packet, the network mask, designated router, backup designated router. I'm going to be covering both of those concepts, but not just at this point. So we've got the hello messages going out from router 1 to router 2. Um, talking, trying to look for anybody that wants to talk to it. And so um, now we're going to finish up here on router 1 and we're going to go into, I'm um, going to say router ID 1.1.1.1. And can exit here and we'll say interface loop back one. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave that for a moment. I wanted to, I was about to make a change here. And we're good. So that's so we've got show IP protocols. We have a routing protocol is OSPF with OSPF with process um, one. The router ID is 1.1.1. .1 .1. And these are the networks that are currently participating, routing for networks um, 10.1.1.0 and 10.1.12.0 slash 24. And so we're good here on router 1. There's show IP route. Not receiving anything. We're only seeing our connected um, routes so far. So we're going to go ahead and do a show IP OSPF. A little bit that scrolled off the screen, so I'm going to roll that up a bit. And that, as a result of that show IP OSPF, we have the routing process for OSPF 1 with the router ID, the time that the process started, the time that has elapsed since the process began. Uh, more details, let's say rolling down further that supports a not so stubby and the router is not originating router LSAs we'll be covering what that means and what type of messages are associated with that but we're just gonna scroll keep going down here till we get to that we're talking about area zero that it is inactive so while this one has it's been configured on router one it's not actually talking OSPF until there is a neighbor. Then it will be active. So let's go ahead and make this active and go over to router 2. Go into global configuration mode. Router OSPF 1. Uh, router ID 2.2.2.2. And networks. Oops. Networks. 10.1.12.0.0.0.255 area 0 network okay so we see that we've already gone from loading to full now if we go back to router 1 real quick and do that show IP OSPF again you notice that before it said that the area backbone 0 was inactive now it says that the area backbone is 0 so we now have a um, an adjacency change on router two and an adjacency change on router one. So now if I do show IP uh, route, no routes yet because the only network that's been defined is a network that is the segment between router one and router two. So we're going to design um, define the loopback ten dot network ten dot 1.2.0 0.0.0.255 area 0 and now if I come back to router 1 real quick look at the route I've actually learned our first OSPF route right there 
where it learned about the 10.1.2.1 slash 32 but notice it's showing it as a 32 bit when I configured if we go back to the the, the loopback interface for router 2 we said that that interface, if I do a show run interface loopback 2, I configured that with a 24 bit subnet mask. However, it is going, coming in and being processed in OSPF as a 32 bit mask. And what we have to make the change is we need to go into the interface loopback 2, and we have to use issue a command that um, says that IP. OSPF network and that it is a point to point network. Now if I come back here to router um, 1 issue that command oh, let me do a clear IP OS, OSPF process So we can bounce that there we go and run. See? Now this has changed. Are we still having waiting for the route? There we go. Now look, instead of it showing that 10.1.2.0 with a 32-bit mask, it's now showing it at with a 24-bit mask. And this is this is very important. So all accomplished by changing the network type for that interface. Uh, let's see. And I think I think that's we're done. Can do the same commands and do a write here because we have OSPF running. Do a show IP OSPF. And again we see the routing process OSPF1 with router ID of 2.2.2 and working for area backbone 0. Number of interfaces in this area is 2 so that's the loopback interface as well as the interface for the segment between router 1. Area has no authentication. We'll be doing authentication in a later segment um, and we'll also be digging a little more into the LSA types um, and some of the additional features in here in, in that show IP um, OSPF. So since we have an adjacency and neighbor here, let's do show IP OSPF neighbor. Whoops. Show IP OSPF neighbor. And we see our neighbor ID. There our neighbor is neighbor 1.1.1. Priority 0. State is full, meaning that the database has the database calculations are complete and the appropriate entries are now in the routing table. Um, here's the dead timer and the address for that neighbor and the interface. Okay and we'll go let's do look at the same information over here on router 1 show IP OSPF neighbor. We see that the neighbor is 2.2.2 uh, priority of zero, state full, dead timer, the address, and the serial um, interface there is serial one slash zero. That's the interface that's actually um, completing, being used to um, with for this segment. So seeing that uh, show uh, the output there from the show IP OSPF neighbor, we went through the details there. Let's do a show IP route and we see that we have that one route so far that's been learned on router 1 and we have one route going back to router 2 show IP route we have one route that's been learned and again if we go back and look I'm fairly certain we defined that 10.1.1.1 network with a 24-bit subnet mask However, it's being coming across in OSPF as a 32-bit. So let's go over here and go back in global configuration mode. And that is interface. Let me don't need to be all the way up there. That's probably enough. And can make that smaller. Yeah. 
that's interface loopback one. And we're going to say IP, IP. What is happening here? Oh, I know what's wrong. There we go. IP OSP OSPF. Right, I'm in the right place. OSPF. I want to look at the additional option subcommands here. Um, we see we could actually go into where we're looking at a um, change into a specific process ID. It's under here where we can work on configure the authentication on that interface. Cost, we can change the dead interval. We can change the hello interval. Um, this message digest key would be used in connection with the authentication. Um, but for this particular instance, um, we're going to be using the, the network command. And also we can actually shut down OSPF state to disable it under this current interface. So we're going to do those. We're going to say IP OSPF network. And we're going to define that interface uh, for loopback one as a network type of point to point. Now if we go back to router two and look at the show IP route and we just look let's um, narrow it down and say show IP route OSPF we only want to look at the routes that are um, part of the OSPF process and now we see that the 10.1.0 slash 24, whereas before it was 10.1.1 slash 32. Okay, so we've got OSPF up and running between routers 1 and router 2. And now what we're going to do is jump on router 3. And I think we've looked at the show IP interface brief at the interfaces real quick and go ahead and go into global configuration mode router OSPF1 and router ID 3.3.3.3 reason it's a good idea to set the router ID at the beginning uh, actually I'm not going to set it here we'll see what happens if I don't set the router ID I'm just going to leave it um, as it would if right now if I do show IP protocols it says that the router ID is 192.168.103.1 okay it went to the highest loopback interface so we're going to leave that and I'll just go ahead and complete the network configure network statements 10.1.23.0 0.0.0.3 255 for area 23 we're putting this the segment between router uh, we're setting up a different um, area for on router 3 okay so that's area 23 and then we'll say network 10.1.3.0.0.0.255 is the wild card my ask and area 23 and we'll also go ahead and exit and go into the interface for loopback 3 and we'll say IP OSPF network point point to point so we get the correct subnet mask being tr um, pr transferred on that segment and if we do um, and here and let's write this and show IP OSPF so we see again that we are talking about the routing process process ID of 1 with an ID of 192.168.103.1 um, and that we're the bandwidth is reference bandwidth unit is 100 megabits per second and this is for area 23 now what's gonna next thing we need to do is I can't 
can't remember. I think I actually yeah. So I've configured router three for that and for that network. But I need to go back up here to router two. I know I was forgetting something. Um, need to go into router OSPF one network. Bring out my notes. One of the things you le I've learned is when I'm working, it is important for me to have notes to work from, not to be completely verbose and have everything written down, but to have a, uh, a starting point because it's easy to get very lost very quick and forget the exact next step. So we're going to put that in. That's that 10.1. Um, 23.0 network and I'm going to put that in area 23 and we should get there we go and now we've got our adjacency change with the uh, with that with router 3 now remember what I showed you we were talking about if I come out here and I show IP protocol oops we see that the router ID here is 2.2.2 .2. if we come over to router 3 and I say show IP protocol we said that the router ID is 192.168.103.1, which is that high that's the highest loopback interface that's configured in the up and up state. So I actually want the router ID on router 3 to be 3.3.3.3. So I'm gonna have to go back into the OSPF process and say router ID 3.3.3.3. Now watch what happens. Okay says reload OSPF reload or use clear IP OSPF process command for this to take place this is not something to do during production time um, and why well you'll see I mean you can kind of get the idea here reload automatic means that the router is taken offline and the, the iOS it re the iOS is reloaded, uh, reloads the configuration, and the router starts over. So if that happens, all networking is down. So I'm going to just go say clear IP OSPF process and say yes. It happens very quickly here in GNS3 and in, and in a lab environment. However, in production, this could take a little longer and it is an outage when that happens because we go down from full to down neighbor down interface down or detached comes back up I mean we went from uh, we were at 30 36 37 so we're talking microseconds here but in production this could take longer and it still is an outage and outages have a cost but we've gone back to full and full so now if I say show IP protocol we see that the router ID is indeed 3.3.3.3 which is the value that wanted it to have um, let's see one of the things I want to take a look at I'm actually going to on router 3 I'm going to go back into go into OSPF I'm gonna go into router OSPF 1 and go into excellent go into interface serial 1 slash 1 and say IP OSPF shutdown shutdown okay we see the neighborhood come that neighbor adjacency is gone and the reason I want to do that I want to start another capture um, between router 3 and router 2 and because I want to capture look at the details for this capture and some of the, this is going to be helping in terms of looking at the type of message that are uh, passed in OSPF we see the hello message there so I'm gonna go back into router 3 and issue the no IP OSPF shutdown great perfect 
So we see a lot of detail here. We see database descriptions. We see LS requests, database description, LS updates, request, updates, update, update. And then we're back to hello. So we're going to look at that information, um, those, those messages. And I think um, okay so we've got that captured there and I'm just gonna m minimize that for now and come back to router 3 and do a write, write memory to save our configuration and we'll take a look at the show IP protocols and see that we're talking about OSPF process 1 and the router ID is 3.3.3 .3 and the networks that are routing for the networks that are listed here the 10.1.3.0 network and the 10.1.23.0 network um, if we do a show IP route we have some if we go up to the I legend IA stands for OSPF inter area routes and that is the routes that are from an area that are outside of um, another area so router 3 is in is only in area 23 but because it is has a neighbor relationship with router 2 it's learned about these these routes that have the um, IA legend before it would for enter IA stands for OSPF enter area so we've learned we're learning more the routing table is building and what we're going to do now is um, let's see let's take a look at the routing table on router 3 show IP route so we don't have the loop back interfaces from router 3 remember that there is a show IP interface brief we have um, all of those loop backs not that many that are not participating in OSPF so what we're gonna do real quick is let's get them in and we'll also make sure that we change the network type so that the appropriate subnet mask is sent along. Um, so we're going to go router OSPF. Now we're going to go into interface loopback 3 IP OSPF network point to point I'm going to say exit that um, network router OSPF 1 network 10 dot 1 dot 3 dot 0 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 255 area 23 interface loop back 100 no oh, network I'm jumping ahead of myself router OSPF my notes are incorrect here so let me back up let's go back into the router process let's first get the um, networks for the loopback interfaces participating in OSPF and then I'll change the um, network type to point to point so that the subnet mask is correctly reflected in the routing table so we're back in the router process and the next network that we want to um, get in here is the network if we do real quick do show IP interface brief okay so we want to say network 10 dot 
no, not 10, 192.168.100.0.0.0.3.255 area 100. Now we need to go into each of the loopbacks. So we'll exit, interface loopback 100, IP OSPF network point to point, interface loopback 101, point to point, interface loopback 102. IPOSPF network point to point and the last one interface loopback 103 IPOSPF network point to point okay so if we exit here to write them and then we'll take a look at the OSPF show IPOSPF process ID correct ID that we want for the and that we are there are two networks area 23 and area 100 we put the loopback interfaces in area 100 and if I do a show IP route we see that again we've got the all of these this is going to be part of our exercise to do a summary um, because we're going to have, we don't want all of those showing up as separate entries in the routing table. That's not very efficient. So we'll, we'll keep me doing a summary address. And I think what I want to do now is um, we have, so could, let's come over to router one and show IP route. What have we got in here? So we've got some inter area, inter area um, routes that have been learned here also. We've learned about the 10.1.3 and we've learned about the 10.1.23. Okay, so there are times when um, we had a, a trading partner that needed to have access to the client's environment, but they didn't have um, an interface in area zero. And we know that if I can bring it up real quick, let's see. Yeah, here we go. I mean, by definition, OSPF, all areas in open shortest path first, AS system must be physically connected to the area, backbone area zero. But there are cases where that's not physically possible. Um, the partner is on another network. It's a company that's been acquired, uh, and we want you want to use a band-aid approach to get their network, the two networks between the partner, the new acquisition integrated. There's a way to to do that, and that's using a virtual link. But it's it's a considered a band-aid at best. It is not a a situation that you want to hold keep in configuration active in active configuration very long you want to use this short term um, until actually the network redesign could be uh, completed to actually integrate the new acquisition um, in a more sustainable going forward method so what we're going to do is we're going to use the area 23 on router 3 and remember if we do a show IP protocols We have two additional areas on router th on router three. We have area 23 and area 100. So these are this is the networks for the new acquisition. Um, and so what we can do is on router three we can actually set up what's called a virtual link. And let's take a look and get that done. Just come T. And it's really straightforward, there, but there's a lot of mechanics going on behind the scene. And let's see, I want to 
stop that capture and I want to start a capture no, stop <laughs> yeah. start capture and I want to capture router 3 HDLC because we want to see how that how this virtual link appears coming across um, and we'll have that as a capture that we can look back at so that capture is running and let's just go ahead and go in here and get that virtual link configured so we say go back into the OSPF um, process router OSPF 1 area 23 virtual link and the oh, oh, I'm on the, doing it on the wrong router need to go up here to router 2 first let's do it from that side global config router OSPF 1 area 23 virtual link and we're doing the virtual link to the router ID which is 3.3.3.3 .3 .3 .3. And then we're going to do the same thing on router 3. We're, going to, we're already there, so we're going to say area 23, virtual link, and it's to router 2's router ID, 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. And I should have seen. There we go. So we've got the adjacency change there for process one for the neighbor at 2.2 OSPF virtual link loading and to full. And if we do a show IP route, okay, do show IP protocols anything looking different so far nothing really not really um, well let's go back to router 2 right memory and let's take a look and say show IP route now routing table has changed um, we're now seeing we we see um, the enter. If I go back up before our router table on router two, we only had the 10.1 one 10.1.1.0 network, which was from router one. However, now we're seeing enter area. Um, OSPF enter area we're looking at we see those 100 101 102 and 103 and we'll also note those are coming in because of the um, the virtual link and what we're going to do is go to router 2 and say show IP OSPF neighbor Okay, now we see that we have a the virtual link interface. You, at first, it's like, well, you're seeing that I'm seeing the neighbor twice. I'm seeing the network ID of 3.3.3. .3 I'm seeing it twice, but it's important to just keep following the logic of the line because this first one is for the virtual link. And so for neighbor, the neighbor is at with the ID of 3.3.3. .3 State is full that's the address for the the interface and that's an OSPF virtual link and the other neighbor is router 1 and then this is the router um, the IP this is the other neighbor relationship with router 3 okay which was within the formed on the 10.1.23.0 subnet Okay, so we're good there. And
then I think the last thing we need to do there are two I think two more things maybe no one more thing is to make to make this uh, clean up the the routing table so that it's a little more efficient um, because we do not need on router one show IP route we do not need all three of those addresses appearing in the routing table on both of these routers. We can actually have a summary address um, in the OSPF process for this area border router, which is what area what router three is, and we can actually summarize those those networks and we can optimize that routing table uh, on routers one and two by having the summary sent out by the area border router. So here we're going to exit out and we would say router OSPF1 area it's area 100 because that's where the loopback interface is those loopback 101 102, 100, 102, 101, 102, 103 are in area 100. Look at the options here. Range, summarize routes, matching address, mask, border, routers only. Very important there. Only on the border routers will this work. And we're going to say 192.168.100.0. 255.255.252.0 and if we go back here that that's already changed let me take a moment yep there we go so now we now have a much more efficient routing table um, because of doing a summary on router 3 so we're saying that for any of the networks on this 192.168.100.0 slash 22 subnet this is the path to get them through serial.1 1 slash 1 so instead of having this multiple entries as we had previously a lot cleaner we have one entry that's that's telling us where we need to go should see the same thing back here on router 1 show IP route Again, we have a much cleaner entry, single line entry for those routes having been summarized. And I think that's, let's actually, let's do a show IP OSPF database. And this gets into some of the details of the types of messages. So, so far, so we know that router one has one neighbor that it has formed uh, an adjacency, a, a um, relationship with and that's router 2 so we see we're getting um, we have summary link states and we have router states area 0 and we're going to be going really deep into this because I actually start that in the next session we want to talk about what these what this database how what the importance of this database and what the information in the database can, how it can be used to determine um, exactly what neighbors we have and how those neighbors are transmitting uh, and, and the relationships we have with those neighbors so I think it is one last thing which was that this loopback 30 interface on router 30 on router 1 was to be simulated as our um, internet connection so we need to now have this network um, need the router the OSPF process to um, let router 2 know that there is a default information um, a different path because right now router 2 says doesn't have any um, default paths it's just going it's going to look into its routing table so we want for internet activity anything that doesn't have a designated path we want router 1 to be that path so let's go back over here I'm going to say router 1 into global configuration mode router OSPF1 
and it's pretty simple. Default information, I've seen this before, it was used in ripng, very similar command. Uh, we're going to say default information originate. Now if we go to, to router 2 and say show IP route, it may take a moment. over to okay let's see can we ping from router 3 over to I forgot to write that change on router 1 jumping around a little bit here so let's do show IP in three. And this is this loopback 30 is to be our network to simulate our network connectivity. So can I now ping that network from router three? And so far I cannot. So now what happened here? I should have that route and should have pathway from router 3 to that loopback interface on router 3. Oh, I know what happened. If I do a show run section OSPF, I think I forgot to put the full command. I only put default information originate. I need to have default information originate always. So I'm already in the router OSPF process here. So to play it safe, I'm going to say no default information originate. And then say default information originate. And there's another option, always. Okay, we can end it there. So now, show our routing table. Oh, there we go. Now we have this E2, this OSPF, this E2, um, which up here in our legend says that this is an OSPF external type 2. And so we now have a default path. Should also see this on. I don't know why I didn't catch that when I was looking at router 2. Router 2 didn't have the default path. Now if I type it, router 2 now has a default path. Router 2, can we now ping 170, what is it, can we ping, uh, slow down, slow down, can we ping 172, 172.30.30.1 been a long day yay success so router 2 now has access to this network that we're simulating our uh, as our as our internet so router 3 ping dot 172.30.30.1 okay now we have the connectivity that we want so this is just you know a very simple um, OSPF implementation there's n not a lot of major bells and whistles but the the magic of what's occurring is in the message types that are being transmitted behind the scenes which I've captured um, and we'll be looking at those captures there'll be an I'll do an entire session just on on the captures um, and I think that's a good place now that we have the full connectivity from router 3 um, three to router one and router two to router one we have the e2 type and we're going to play with that e2 type in another session